Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to Josh Wright Piano TV. Today's episode is going to take a look at this famous uh, broken chord or fast arpeggiated section in the Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy by Tchaikovsky from The Nutcracker. And how specifically how we can get a bit more clarity like that in our playing. I was looking up uh, just some information about the Celesta, um, that beautiful uh, bell-like keyboard instrument, most famous probably, uh, not only for Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy, but also for the theme um, from Harry Potter. Okay, and... Uh, I've had, uh, when I was doing that research, I noticed even respected pianists would sometimes clump their notes just a little bit. And get a little bit of that um, lack of clarity. And I've had students struggle with this exact passage. How can we get that more clear? The arm plays the piano in many respects. If you cut off your weight source and you're just playing with fingers, if you're just isolating fingers, it causes all sorts of issues to arise. So one thing, and I've, by the way, I've had issues in the last two days with three students with broken arpeggios that we had to go over these exact concepts I'm gonna share in this video. So that kind of spurred um, the discussion that I wanted to, uh, uh, have on this along with those videos about the Celesta, I was like, I gotta make a video on this. The first thing, so what does that mean, playing the piano with the arm? It means that you feel the connection all the way down the forearm, through the wrist, all the way into the fingertip. That's how you're producing sound. And you might think, okay, that's great for a slow tempo. But how is that actually going to help me as I increase that tempo? Well, something very special occurs when you are using weight properly. You realize that it takes very little effort to pu push down a note. It's, it's, you're kind of like surrendering the weight into the key, okay? And everything is feeling connected. You're using the entire mechanism. Additional benefits of doing that, just let alone, you know, less effort. Another thing that uh, it is very helpful with is the fact that you realize that the fingers aren't dependent on one another. For instance, I don't have to sit and hold this position and get tight. If I'm putting this down separately, the hand is in a relaxed position here. When I put that note down, that's a separate feeling and my hand remains relaxed. Whereas if I'm isolating the fingers and I'm thinking of this as one clump of notes and my hand locks into that position, it can cause all sorts of issues. A lot of students will take this too far and they'll stop having any activity in their fingers, which ironically enough, isolating the fingers, having too much finger action and not enough arm weight yields very similar results to having so much arm weight and a lack of finger action. Um, so here's that, a lot of arm weight, nice and relaxed, but no finger action. I've heard that. And then only isolating the fingers. you get that very similar clumping feeling. Um, so if you practice slowly, and feel the individuality of that weight going down into that key, and the arm is just carrying the hand into the right position, Suddenly, this is no longer a challenge. Okay? Might take some work. Suddenly is probably a deceptive word. Okay, another thing that I wanted to uh, discuss along those same um, lines. What does that finger action look like? It's so tiny. At the very, very basic level, I guess you're pulling back on the key just a tiny bit. Um, but it doesn't feel like a slide or anything. It just feels like activity, like going on, like grabbing the key at the fingertip level, along with this huge source of weight. That really sets a lot of students free. For instance, I was working with a student yesterday on the Mozart K545 Sonata in C major. And he got, the scales were brilliant. And he got to this part. 
he was overplaying and there was all sorts of tension. You need to make sure that you're releasing the keys as you go as well. And that ties back into just using the arm weight. You're no longer connecting things uh, into these tense clumps. You're just allowing that arm to carry those fingertips into the right position and you're just feeling uh, a nice release from key to key. Once we went over this concept, he stopped playing so loudly because it's interesting when you cut off your arm weight, you kind of hold your wrist down low or I guess you could do it with a high wrist too. But when you're just playing with fingers, you overcompensate because you no longer have your waist source. So you end up playing louder and then your hand gets tighter and it's just this downward spiral. And he was lifting his fingers in these really unnatural ways. As soon as we got him connected into his bigger weight source, things started to feel a lot more easy. I have a, a, an advanced student who was playing this and we had to go over the opposite um, uh, concept. She was using two little finger action. She was doing more of the arm weight like that looked pretty relaxed and natural. But getting that, so for her, it was also connecting back into the arm, but also, feeling the release of the fingertip um, on each key and not holding on to previous notes. So focus on those clean releases, focus on your weight source. Other places that this can be helped by any type of rolled chord. So this is gonna be a interesting experiment. I haven't played this in years, but the uh, Liszt Paganini etude number six. I've had students play this and they'll kind of clump middle notes and maybe take a little longer to get up to the top. Again, if you have active fingertips and you connect into that main weight source unifying your whole mechanism, man, it just makes it a lot more effortless. This can also help with really slow sections like the Chopin Nocturne Opus 48 number one. It has all these beautiful rolled chords in the middle section. individuality of those. Like I've heard students clump those. And they have every, like their dynamic level's pretty good, but things just aren't clear. Without pedal, this is what it sounds like. It's as if you're taking your finger and running a lot, running it along a harp that's perfectly tuned to C major, whatever that would be, and just going okay. I don't play harp, so I'm sure that was uh, insulting what I just said. I, I apologize. But it's just, it's just like your finger is strumming across those harp strings. It, your finger doesn't go, but, uh, uh, you know, in clumps like your <laughs> piano hands might do, um, be tempted to do. Sorry, I'm not getting that note clear. Okay, so I hope those concepts can help you clear up any um, fast arpeggiated sections. This can also help uh, with any type of fast passage, especially passages that uh, have to be aligned um, that are going very quick. Like I was working with that same student who worked on the Sugar Plum Fairy. Um, She was having tendency to do that. So we activated those fingertips. We connected the weight back into the arm. It's actually less work that way and it feels better and it sounds better. So you get the best of both worlds. It's, it's easier to play. You sometimes think to get a good result, you gotta work a lot harder. Sometimes it's about working less hard. So 
I hope those uh, concepts help each of you in, in any of these situations, whether it's just basic alignment issues or fast arpeggiated chords or rolled chords um, or even simultaneous rolled chords like in the list, uh, but needing that ease uh, with which to play. So um, one thing I'm terrible at is asking you if you'd be so kind as to subscribe to the channel if you get a lot of value out of that. I think I've said that in a handful of videos out of the 500 or so we've posted to this channel. So if you wouldn't mind uh, subscribing and liking the video, that would be great. I will leave a few links in the description below. Um, I'll leave a couple of links for my paid courses if you'd like to go even deeper than this channel um, goes over. I'll leave a link to a webinar, a free webinar containing 10 of my favorite tips to take your playing to that next level. These are tips I use every day uh, in my playing and my teaching. And then finally, a link to my kit, which is all the gear that I use to make these videos, along with some CD recommendations, book recommendations, uh, stuff to help you with theory, and much more. Again, if any of you have any questions, please let me know. My email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Please keep those emails short as I receive thousands of them. <laughs> so I'll have a better chance at getting to them if they are short. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions. Mm -hmm.